Hey there guys, so in this video we're going to be going over how I like to pick my team for different things. I'm having to try to record this in a different way, so if it doesn't come out exactly how I want it to, I'm sorry about that, but hopefully it still gets the job across. So, I want to go over like in a couple different situations that you might like encounter when you're trying to build a team. So let's start with like the most important one, I guess you could say, is like story content it's the most important place like learn how to build a team and what you're looking for in building a team so like usually they added the preview function which is actually really nice right where you can just view it from out here but before let's just say you had to go in so i'll pick a champion that i just know i'll probably be able to like bring with me on most paths so i'll put like ghost on my team right because i just you can just bring ghost for most paths i expand out i look at it depends on which way I want to build the team, but I'll like look for all three bosses, I'll look for all the paths, I'll look for stuff like that. Because like in Act 7, you can kind of take most of the paths, I feel like, with even only okay rosters. So right here, like, I just go through all like the different nodes, and like, okay, Masochism, Double Down, Power Focus 2. So I'd want a skill champion if I'm taking this lane, but at the same time, there's the masochism, and there's also a lot of bleed immunity on this, right? So you don't want to bring a skill with bleed, even though you get critical rating. And critical rating isn't really a great trade-off for not being able to use your main source of damage if you're someone like Nick Fury. Nick Fury would actually be okay for this just because of his super high damage when he's in his real life form. All right, so I'd look at this, and my first thought goes to Apocalypse will handle Ook Cage, kind of, and he could probably also handle the King Groot if I wanted him to. I could also use, like, Doom. Ghost. Ghost would be really good, actually, for this path because you're just ignoring masochism. And outside of King Groot SP2, all the SP2s are easy enough to avoid. So, right, that's how I would look at that, and then I would check the boss. What do I need specifically for this boss? And this boss, in particular, is pretty good with Ghost because Clairvoyant puts the debuffs on you, so I'm already happy with this Ghost team, pretty much. It's so like for this path, then I would just exit the quest, I would come out. Now that I know the nodes, I know what path I'm gonna take. Let's say this is like first clear, and let's say that's what I decided on. So I know I'm bringing Ghost, so I wanna bring my Wasp just to make it easier. And it looked like most of those champions could be power controlled and they have power focus too. Doom will be fairly good. Now, as I said, I could bring like Apocalypse in, but my Apocalypse is actually in AW right now, same with my Cable, so I don't really want to bring them. They're all bleeding me, so I can't bring Archangel. But maybe I want to bring in, thinking about the champions, a good call I think would be Torch. Where's my Torch? I can bring Torch for Ghost Rider and for Clairvoyant, so that's already two champions I can take with him that I know. And it gives me an attack synergy, so that's always nice. And then I'd probably bring in... Actually, that's kind of all I need for this team. So I'll probably... Man, my roster's changed a lot since I did 7.1 the first time. Wow. Um, and... No, there wasn't really any metal. And I guess like Hyperion just for like base damage. And then I would go in. And all right, that's just kind of what I do for like any quest, right? Like let's just go into 7.3, which right, I haven't done yet. So I literally don't know the paths. So I have this team. I bet I could find a lane for this team to work on. But I'm kind of interested in going for the six star shards. And that's not too bad. So this is the one that gives me an unstoppable. The defender starts the fact that they end up an unblockable buff. And especially in Act 7, always read through every single node. I know it's a lot of reading to do, but it just allows you to like actually understand what's going on, right? Uh, the defender is knocked down by a special attack. The unblockable buff is, a, is released with an unstoppable buff. Whenever the defender is struck, with the first hit of a heavy attack, the unstoppable buff is replaced by an unblockable buff. That's actually an interesting note. Can't stop, won't stop, so you need that. Whenever a mystic attacker knocks down the defender, so... Doom 
will be really good for this. Doom, Sorcerer Supreme, because you have your slow, so you're ignoring the unstoppable phase. Mojo, because you also have your unstoppable by yourself on Mojo, actually would be kind of nice. But you can't get rid of the unstoppable or the unblockable too well. Out? Oh, no, no, not them. There's actually a couple metal fights, so I would bring Magneto. And probably like Kingpin. So right, I would like come in with like Doom and stuff like that. And then I'll click here. So I kind of have an idea of what I want to be bringing in, which right, I was like Doom, Kingpin, Sorcerer, maybe something kind of like that. So I'm looking over here. Burnout. Not too bad. Unlimited power can be a pain, I guess, but not too bad if you have decent power control. The defender gained power or health under the effects of the heal blocker power lock and sit infected with a non stacking passive legion. Okay, so I could also use a power lock champion with nullify, which I don't have magic, so that kind of sucks for that. Magneto, which I was already thinking of bringing. And this is a ghost fight. That's a ghost fight if I've ever seen one. <laughs> so yeah, that I'd bring ghost for. Probably just ghost boss for that one. So I'd probably take this with like Doom and just run through it unless there was something I missed. So right, that's how I kind of go about when I do that. Another way I also sometimes look at a quest like that, I'll go into a different quest just so it's not always the same stuff, is... Actually, it doesn't apply as much in Act 7 because it's always the same nodes all the way throughout. But you should also check all the different nodes along the path. Because, right, let's say for this one, you need all this stuff. But when you look at it, there are three champions that could pose an issue. Miles Morales now has Miss. And so if your Cosmic Champion doesn't have a counter to Miss, and let's say you're using, like, a high, like, Hyperion for this, you have all the stuff you need for Hyperion but you're gonna be missing all your attacks. And if you only brought Hyperion or something, you're gonna be in for a lot of pain. Juggernaut, you always have to watch out for Juggernauts just in case they get a really annoying and Immortal Hulk cheating death. So you have to check your defenders, make sure you know what they're gonna be doing with the combination of the nodes. Like why did Kabam choose to put a Miles Morales here? It's because they know a lot of Cosmic Champions spam a lot of specials, same with Mystic Champions. So you're gonna want to make sure that your champion has a miss counter, something kind of like Hercules or Cosmic Ghost Rider with his Vigilance buff. There's a couple options, or you could go for a champion that won't use a special attack inside the Cosmic class. So I'm not exactly sure who I'd use for that. Or you could even just forego that, just bring in like Archangel. <laughs> Oop, my bad. So that's kind of what I would think about for that. When you come up to the boss, I know for this I know for this one who the easiest boss is, it's Nova. It's Nova and Man Thing. For Man Thing, just bring a champion that doesn't do energy damage and just kind of go crazy with it. Because you have flare and power shields, so you just get massive specials off, like bringing Immortal Abomination Cable, something kind of like that. Immortal Abomination himself can be a bit annoying if you don't bring like Archangel or something. Nova's Doom. Doom or Mags basically every time. You see him, just bring a Doom. And Doom would actually work for the path because the Mystic Champions gain damage from there. And you can also use him for the Science Champions to gain the superiority of Deep Impact. So it's just important to understand how the nodes are going to affect the defenders. And then there is the second type of game mode, which is important to learn how to build a team for, is Alliance Quest. So, with the way Alliance Quest works, let's just say it was 10 paths for every section, you have to take a path in every section, kind of, right? So you know which fights you're designated to take. I take these down the middle, right, which is the Stealthy, She-Hulk, Black Panther, and Silver Surfer. So I know I need to counter for this node, which right now I've been using Hercules and just like playing around with Hercules, trying to figure out how I like to play with him. Just doing silly things, you know? You have a lot of items for the compensation. So learning new champions in AQ can be fun if you're confident enough with it. 
That's right, I picked that for there. And now my section two, I look at the nodes and the champions here. So this is actually another lane I'll probably use Hercules mainly on because the um, with this you regen while um, while you're hitting them. Not regen. If you have willpower and debuffs, you're gonna regen while hitting them. So you're just able to kind of cheese that node with like suicides. So I'll probably use like Hercules to heal up a little bit there. <laughs> and then I know up here I take the power shield lane. So I want someone with big specials, which again Hercules has big specials. I brought Namor today to try out because I'm running suicides today. So he also has massive specials for this, and Venom Pool can eat the armor up buffs on the first two fights to compensate for the um, suicide damage and has decently hitting special attacks once ramped up. So I was interested to try out how Venom Pool will do for that and like Nimrod and stuff. <coughs> so right, like when I'm building an AQ team, I kind of like to look at like each section individually. So I have at least one person who can be used for each section, and if they can cover more than one section, that's a benefit, right? Like Hercules is a super versatile champion that I can use in all three sections because his specials hit hard for power shield, right? He has very high damage and a miss counter for this. And down here, this node, I want to be stun immune if I can be, and Hercules has a stun immune function and just has high damage to burst through those fights, which like you don't want to like be in this in your section one too long. So that's kind of how I look at that. Alliance War is a little bit different. I might make a video on how I like to plan Alliance War when I used to do that, but that's not something I have an immediate plan for. That's just something that's like fun to look at because Alliance War is fun in my opinion. Those are the two more important ones. I'm going, so yeah, that's kind of how I like to plan out a quest is I like to look for I like to look for the lane I want to take. I kind of prefer looking for the lane I want to take first. And then I can pick the boss because especially with Act 7, you have the node selectors or the champion selector node. So if you really want to, you can take any lane and then just bring a direct counter. Like, right, I could take, what's this one? Nope. I'm trying to find the lane that I couldn't take them for. I guess this one, but any of them like really okay let's just say like i don't bring doom and i want to take this red guard this red goblin who i'd want to use doom for i can just swap out doom in the last one so the boss isn't necessarily as important because for a boss you can always just revive ones or swap out your champion something like that or you can plan a specific spot but you have five champion slots and there are six fights on a lane almost every quest in act seven so you want to make sure that your champions can take at least one fight per champion on average, right? Like Wasp plus Ghost is kind of like two champions, but I'll prob I'll mainly just use Ghost because you don't just don't die with Ghost, and then you're able to take the extra fight plus the Wasp fight that you need to like have the extra champion for. And then you need to have one champion usually for a boss. If you can make it to all your champions fit a boss, that's really good. But the boss is the least important. You really just need one or two counters. You really just need one counter for a boss. And if you die, you're gonna revive that one champion. You're not like needing to bring five counters for a red goblin, right? So I like building from path into boss and then thinking about the counters that fit the most options. Alliance quest, I like looking at each section, what champions I need to bring. Of course, if you can bring a champion that benefits against mini bosses or boss in Alliance Quest, it also helps. Right, like Hercules can help against Nimrod and Penny really easily. Venom Pool is a great spider killer, and Namor should work against both. I kind of want to try them out. So, right, like all those champions can cover a lot of different stuff in this in all those quests that I mentioned. So, I hope this kind of explains how I like to build out my teams for a quest. Which, for like if you're a really end game player, I assume you know how to do this already. But for like newer players, I hope this can help kind of guide like how to think for yourself. Because I see in a bunch of like just game chats in general, people just asking for like who to bring for this quest. And it's like, I saw someone asking about this one and don't dash backwards and they have power gain. Well, if you look at this outside of Sentinel, these are all fights that are easily Doctor Doomed like super easily taken with Dr. Doom, right? You just go in, you take Dr. Doom there. You'll have to dash back a little bit probably for this one unless you bring a white mags, take it with Dr. Doom. 
I'll probably bring Magneto, take it with Dr. Doom. Magneto or Dr. Doom? Dr. Doom, right? Two champions just killed an entire path. And so it's important to be able to look at your roster and then look at the quests that you're taking, which having, knowing your roster is still important for that. So I hope this helps with that. I hope you guys have a good one. I'm going to try to get a second video later tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Bye.